Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. And this has been a long time coming. I feel as though everyone and their mother and grandmother have read this book and I still have not read it. I mean, part of it is the size, but part of it is just like, it's been so hyped and I'm like, what happens if I don't like it? Even though I love everything else I've read by Brandon Sanderson. So, I will be starting this today and I will be vlogging my experience of reading this behemoth of a book. And uh, you will be coming along with me and seeing how my thoughts and facial reactions develop. At the moment, my knowledge of the plot is that it is an epic fantasy in a, in a war-torn world. There's magic, there's lots of characters, and one of them's a slave and he's been building bridges. So, like, not really the best of plot descriptions. Really excited to get into it. I mean, I'm predicting that this is going to be five stars. So hopefully it lives up to my predictions and what I'm hoping for it. Prologue. Well, the two prologues complete. I don't understand what's going on, but I've heard that's normal. And I've heard that you only really understand the prologues on reread. Bridge four. I've heard so much about this. Update. So I have read uh, 126 pages now. I've just finished chapter seven. I wanted to get a little bit into it before like reporting back. Uh, I've been getting into it. So I found like the first, well, like the prelude and then the second, pro the prologue and then chapter one. I found those a little bit weird, which I knew going in that they were a little bit tricky to read. Uh, that a lot of people have said that they're weird. And I think people have also said that the interludes are weird. So I'm just mentally prepared for those. I didn't, I don't really understand the lashing thing, the what, the gravitational thing. Basically I'm imagining him as being like an alamance and he's got this another metal. <laughs> but I know it's not that, but like I just haven't quite got that ma the magic system down. And it's all <laughs> it's all going a little bit over my head. At least that sort of magic system. And I mean a lot of the magic system is going over my head. Like the different it, it's all going over my head. Okay, right now I, I can just I'm hoping that it's gonna click at some point that I will start to understand what the magic system actually is and does because right now I, 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 I don't know. So the characters, well I've met the infamous Kaladin and I've met Shalon and I, I'm liking both of their characters so far like I, I really I'm enjoying them, their perspectives like the story definitely seemed to pick up and was a lot better as soon as those characters were introduced. I was like okay I get this now I get it. I, well I don't get the magic system but I like I get those two characters and I like them and so Aladdin has just arrived at the Shattered Plains and Bridge 4 so uh, I really enjoyed that chapter where he's like thrown into that situation and then he's running and I was like keep going Kaladin you can do it uh, and I really liked his the little spirit thing that flies around him I don't know I feel like there's more to her like I quite I quite like her but I, and I'm trying to understand who she is and what she means and what what, what the whole thing is but uh, I'm really liking that and I like Shalon I just like the plot that Shalon has currently like being a scholar and being uh, like how she's trying to infiltrate and be the ward of Jasna and uh, I quite like that as a plot line so so far so good in terms of all of that it feels as though there are a lot of words per page like it's a really heavy hardback and there's just a lot of words per page. Like I've just finished reading A Court of Silver Flames and that was 750 pages. So not that much shorter than this, but a little bit shorter. And I read that really quickly, but there's so many more words on the page here. <laughs> Intrigued but confused by the magic system. So I had a good evening of reading yesterday after work. I did a reading sprints with Mare over from Mare Reads on her channel and I was reading Way of Kings all evening. They I was having a really good time with it. So I finished part one, which was really good. Like I I'm really getting in I'm really getting into it. At least I was getting really getting into part one. Like I was really enjoying where um Shalon's chapter is going and that she's now gonna be apprentice to Jasna. Like I sort of knew it was you you knew it was going to work out, you knew she was gonna keep persevering. But I was still like when she got off with the job I was like, Yes, yes, Shalon, yes. I'm excited. I, I just really like that perspective, like the scholar, the tra like the reading, the like subterfuge, really liking that. And then 
Kaladin's last chapter where he's thinking of killing himself and he's like about to do it and then Syl comes along with the leaves and is like here you go don't don't give up here are these poison leaves and I was like oh bless her little soul she's she was so cute and when I mean, she thought she wasn't gonna be able to come back and I was like yes I really like her <laughs> even though she's not like I don't know even know what she is some weird thing I'm pretty much imagining her as a little sprite but I really really like her I think she's just so cute and then Kaladin deciding that he's gonna keep going and like gonna like build relationships with the people that are on part of his bridge crew and I was like yes Kaladin yes don't give up you can do it really enjoying that and then we get to the interludes what is this fisherman a fisherman fisher like ugh. I mean it was fine but it just I don't I don't know like what does this person have to do with anything does he link anywhere I mean how does he relate like the thing is I could see how Nan Balat was Shalon's brother so I was like okay I can see the link there I can see the reason for it and Seth I could see that as well like he was the assassin from the beginning but Ishik Ishik why 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 have we got Ishik why why is there a random fisherman so I'm sure it will I'm sure it will make sense I'm sure it will make sense but it was just a bit weird how he is hunting for fish uh and the thing is you finish that interlude and you're like interlude over yes and then suddenly you have new characters so you've got Adolin and Dalinar and I know that these are like main characters because I've heard people talk about them but at the moment I just want to go back to Kaladin and Shalom because I've got used to them. It got to like half eleven and I read like a page of the Adolin Dalinar chapter and then I was like I'm going to bed. I can't, I'm not dealing with this today. So I will be picking that up today and hopefully I will start to like Adolin and Dalinar. But at the moment I just want more Kaladin and Shalom. I don't like Elokar. El, El Halkar, El, whatever he is called. I don't like him. He's an idiot. He's an idiot he just wants to like wander off and like attack everything and doesn't really care for his own safety or the safety of others and so I just do not like him because he doesn't he's only thinking about himself I don't like him don't like him at all he's just too self-centered Ugh. Ugh. but I guess now I have met Dalinar and Adeline Adeline uh, and they seem fine. I'm happy with them, but not this Elokar, the, the prince, the king, whatever he is. He's just annoying and everyone's pampering after him. Annoying. But at least now I'm back to Kaladin. And I'm very happy to be back to his chapters. Is this Sanderson just saying sorry for confusing you all with these epigraphs and the interludes and everything that we're just going to have to get used to it because it's Cosmo's great constant? I have theories i have theories I have, I have my brain is working in overdrive and my spidey senses are going like they're going full throttle the clear marks thing like going dim like obviously something happened like kaladin is sucking the power out of them or something he's doing like a lashing that's my theory uh, i don't really understand what the lashings are but i think he's sucking the power out of them and that's why he was able to divert the arrows uh during the latest bridge run or Sil is doing something but my theory is on Kaladin. Something is definitely going on. It's not just, they're not just going dim. That, 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 that is, nah, nah. Something is happening. That, that's where my head is at. And I'm pretty sure I am barking up the right tree. Pretty sure, 100%, that there is something going on. And then my other thoughts, the, the storm has now hit and like Dalinar has been sucked into this vision. I'm pretty sure it's the, the it's gonna be the past. I don't really know what to make of it. Like, I guess things in history have been forgotten or like they've not been remembered correct, not been remembered correctly, but like things have been forgotten from the past and that's why there are these people that wear the shard suits that are better than they are now and like how things have changed over time. So I don't quite know quite what we're meant to get out of that past story. I feel like it's going to have some relevance, but 
I, I, I haven't quite pieced that bit together yet, but there, there's definitely something going on there. Also, wit. I don't trust him. I don't, I don't know. It's not like trust, but there's just something about wit that sits a bit oddly with me. Like, I feel as though there's much more to him than we know, and I want to know what it is. I am intrigued. I think, I don't know, I feel as though there's, so a reveal is going to happen with wit. I don't know what, but I'm expecting something to happen with him. So, I have just read the next set of interludes, which I feel is like the challenge section where you try and like piece together things because although they're very apart from everything else, there must be links between them, so it's like the challenge to try and figure out what's going on. Uh, I've been talking to people about things and I've been told that the epigraphs in the second part, in part two, are all... Uh, they're, they're all like linked, they're a letter and I haven't really figured out what the letter really means uh, but it's a letter supposedly from someone to someone else I've pretty much assumed that there's some like evil things going wrong, someone said someone wants help and not that it's not just Rashad that's affected by this, it is the Cosmere as a whole that's affected by this evil and there seem to be lots of names and I'm trying to remember like what if I've heard of these names before if these names refer to things that I know of but I can't remember because it's been so long since I read both Warbreaker and Elantris and I'd hope I'd remember if it was Mistborn but like I can't none of the names are like standing out to me that's my theories with that and then these interludes uh the first one Ryzen Risen the Vistim he obviously uh bought Seth, because they refer to him as the truthless that was sold seven years ago, so that's going to be Seth that was sold to him, and then he got traded, and that led to the king dying. But I don't know who he got traded to, or like who did all the trading, and like how he ended up being assigned to kill the king. So interesting. Uh, but that's my theories on how that all links. But I'm very interested in the Shin people. Like, the Collector, I really liked this story. I really found, I found him very interesting. Like, this person that manipulates his body into being something else. He's obviously hundreds of years old. And he's investigating the Spren. And that's really interesting because I'm very intrigued by what the Spren are and what they mean and what they do and, like, what what they are. Like, I don't, I don't quite understand them. And I also found it very interesting when he said that he felt drained and there's something being leached from him. So, obviously, the Spren are, like, taking power from him in some way and like how they're doing that and what that means like that sort of like act of taking life from other people and it makes me interested in what the sprint actually are and like how they're getting like taking life and how you can see different sprint at different times and what they all mean so that was really interesting and then the final one the seth one he's been doing these tasks and now he's got this new master which is going to make him like kill loads of people and go absolutely crazy and kill 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 and cause lots of drama and I'm like who is that master like who is he who is it that wants to cause all this drama <laughs> and like catastrophe in the world so as I said I feel as though these interviews are like that test your knowledge and see how much you can piece together section that they don't quite fit they're not quite as easy to read because you're like I don't know who any of these people are uh, and how do they all fit in so intriguing but now on to part three we're back to a Shalon chapter and I'm so happy. It's been so long, hundreds of pages since we saw that name. And now she's back. Now, reading that Shalon chapter and she's drawing the picture of the king. And then when she looks at it, she realises that suddenly she has drawn these two creatures behind him without realising it. And I'm like, there's something going on here. That's her subconscious. Her subconscious has drawn these things. And so I feel as though there must be like another plane where she's seeing them or like they must exist in some sort of overlapping world that exists with this. I don't know what they mean, but they mean something. And uh, that's where I'm going with it. <laughs> Shalon has stolen Jasna's Fabriel. And I still don't really understand like quite what the Fabriel is, but... It's got power, so she's stolen it after that scene in the city where Jasna went and killed those men. I was like, oh, it's all kicking off here. I am intrigued by what's going to happen next. Like, what does this mean? Like, I can't see her getting back to her family with it. Like, I can't see her being able to use it. I feel like she's feeling so guilty about having done that that she's going to confront Jasna 
about it and some, it's not going to go to plan. It's, it's not going to go to plan. And speaking of her, like what's going on with her drawings, like part of me is thinking that she's drawn the scene where this wealthy person is dead with a half-eaten food. And I'm like, is she predicting the king's death? Is that going to be happening? Like, is she predicting that someone's going to kill him in her drawing? Like, is it a premonition? I don't, I don't know. Like, she's, things have definitely been going on with her drawing. So I'm like intrigued by what's going to happen there. The Caledon thing with the crystals where he's using, draining them for power and that, that's obviously happening now. And I'm now curious about this Teft person and who Teft is because he obviously seems to know about this and what the envisagers are and what that all means like I wasn't expecting I didn't realize Teft was going to be like an important player but he obviously does have some importance because he knows things he knows about some powers so yeah I am intrigued about that as well and like what this means for Kaladin and what these, these powers mean like I'm assuming he's doing these this is sort of like as a lashing but we shall see okay. so I've been thinking about the Parshendi and like the Parsman and like what they are and who they are and like what what their motivations are because it's not clear well like it's not being explored yet like we don't know that much about them and like why they made this deal in the first place why like Seth was sent to kill the king like what the motivations for the war are why they're after the gem hearts whatever they're called the chasm fiends like why they are engaging in this and why they're so keen to to do this war, and like what their yeah their motivations and like what's behind their their thought process uh, and why they keep engaging like it's an interesting dynamic because everything that we are reading about is from the side of the alethi and we don't really see any of the Parshendi, like, we just see them as a foreign people. And we don't know very much about them, like, we don't know what their motivation. we don't know anything about them. We don't know what their culture is, we don't know what their motivations are, we don't know why they're doing what they're doing. And so I'm sort of just, like, wanted to know more about them. They feel like an elusive people currently, like, you don't, we don't really know that much about them. So currently it's, like, trying to figure out what, what their role is in this conflict and what their role is going to be in the future and where it's going to progress to and what it means for this this world because I feel as though there's going to be a lot more to their motivations than what we currently know. I absolutely loved the latest Shalon chapter that I just read. It was chapter 45 and it's where she is uh, study like studying for a bit and then she's thinking of leaving and so she tells that to Cabsal and so then she starts drawing the picture of him and the creatures appear behind him again and then they keep following her and she keeps drawing them and then she's surrounded on her bed and they're there and then she uses the uh well whatever it's called she does the soul casting thing whatever that is and i was like so gripped by it and i want to know what these creatures are and what they're coming from and what they mean and who they are like what are they and how does that all relate and I I was like I need to know what's gonna happen next and then the way she like had to try and get out of it and like because what she had soul cast was blood and I was like oh oh and so she she cut herself to try and like pretend that she hadn't done anything when she was discovered oh my god I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that chapter and I was like, I could not put the book down to, to finish, because I didn't want to, that chapter to end. I was like, now I'm back at Caledon. And I normally really like Caledon, but I just want more Shalon now after that. Okay, like literally no time has passed. I've read like two pages, which is the chapter 46. So Caledon's next chapter. And he is like riding the storm. I can see that this seems pretty important. And so like, he's obviously seeing Seth killing people which, cool, fine. He's seeing all the aspects of the world. But then he gets this bit where the storm is like talking to him. So from what I'm gathering, the oath pact was shattered. I mean, I don't quite know what that means and like how that, I, I don't quite understand that. But what I have understood is, I mean, I also I don't understand like how Kaladin is riding the storm and like how he has this power to do that. Don't know. But when it says, okay, uh, Odium comes, most dangerous of all the 16, you will now go. 
So from what I've understood, there are 16 shards in the Cosmere. See, Odium, the most dangerous of all the 16, so he's one of the shards. Mistborn spoiler, you have Preservation Ruin, which are the shards of that world. So he's one of them, is what I'm gathering. He's obviously very dangerous. And if judging by the letter that was the, the part two ep uh, epigraphs, then he is being wielded by Reich or whatever that person's name. Is that person wielding this shard and causing this da damage across the world and killing off the other shards or like hurting the other shards? <laughs> that is where my thoughts are at. That's not really very clear. Oh, jeez. But that is what I am thinking as of right now. Last night, I just kept thinking about things whilst I should have been sleeping. And I kept thinking about the shards and what this all means for the Cosmere. And <laughs> it just kept going round and round in my head and I was like, what does it all mean? But what I'm like thinking about is like shard as a term, like shard is something that's broken or like fragments of something. So could, did, were all the 16 shards like one whole thing and what would it have been like if they were one whole thing because could were they like equaling each other out because it's not as though any of the shards are well from what i've understood it's not as though the shards are bad but they're not good either it's, it's so thinking about mistborn so mistborn spoilers the ruin wasn't necessarily bad but ruin without preservation led to more and more death and catastrophe they needed preservation to balance it so do all of the 16 shards balance each other out? Is that like a possibility that if all 16 shards were together that they would be in balance? And so could one person hold all of the shards? Like could someone wield them all? Like Sazed currently controls ruin and preservation. Like could, could someone have all of them? Is that a possibility? I mean, where do they even come from? Like what, 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 what even is it? Like, what, where did they begin? And what would this mean for a magic system if someone held them all? Is that, like, ultimate power? And then thinking if, like, things have opposites, like, well, not opposites, but, like, ruin and preservation are always in balance. Is the same to be said for odium? Odium being hate. Is there an opposite for that? Is there a shard of love? And then thinking as well how they said that, well, that Ari started off as a good person and then... I'll, I'll find the quote. Does that mean that, the, like, the shards can influence people? And so, if Reich is holding Odium, like, how is that, in how is that shard influencing him? All of the thoughts. Uh, and so, yeah, I just kept thinking about all those things and, like, what it means for the Cosmere and, like, where it's going to go from here. And I feel as though I've got, like, this tiny piece of the puzzle that I've been putting together. And actually, I figured out that I've been doing a... 500 piece jigsaw puzzle and the Cosmo is like a 10,000 piece jigsaw puzzle <laughs> and this is where I'm at like I'm just seeing like this tiny window into it but I'm loving theorizing and thinking about all of this I am having so much fun with it and uh, in terms of the like where I'm at in the book Shalon has just been poisoned and so she's given the soulcaster back to Jasna and wow that got intense very quickly <laughs> I'm not ready for this I feel like I I mean I've got like 300 pages left but it feels like it's really kicking up like really getting going now in this second half chapter 53 when teft says like kelex breath is true i never thought so they've just done the bridge run and then like the arrows all hit none of them and kaladin is like saving everyone <laughs> or like the people that were injured and i'm like when teft says that obviously teft knows something about kaladin and he knows about the spheres and stuff but like it makes it sound as though there's like a prophecy like I don't know I just feel as though there must be some sort of like something that Teth knows about Kaladin or about something because that reaction makes me th makes it feel like there's a prophecy and you know I mean I like the, I like the prophecy trope so but is there a prophecy I didn't realize there might have been a prophecy in the cosmic but maybe prophecy maybe maybe so and then I continued to chapter 54 and we find out that Wit is Hoyd. And I've heard of Hoyd's name. So I know that Hoyd is important and he is able to travel between the worlds and is spotted in like all the different cosmic books. So I have heard of him and him being a world hopper. I mean, I knew Wit was suspicious. 
like I had I wasn't sure about him I was like I I didn't know what was up with with wit I didn't know like what it all meant I could, I could tell he knew something I could tell he wasn't just like talking rubbish like there was definitely something going on with him but I didn't realize exactly who he was so that is a great revelation and he says the word adonalism adon adonalsium adonalsium I don't know what it means but I sense it's going to be important. I feel as though he wouldn't have just said that word for no reason. I feel like that's definitely going to have significance. And yeah, definitely intrigued by what Witch Hoyd is going to be up to. Especially when he says like he has to leave. Uh, the Cosmere takes precedence over food, <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, food should take precedence over many, many things. Now I'm really wondering what Sadius, Sadius, his announcement is going to be. I can't sense it being anything good. Aside from like living in this hoodie this week because it's cosy, uh, I, I have been making excellent progress on The Way of Kings. I'm on page 885 now, so just over 100 pages left. I feel like this is going to be the sand lunch. I'm coming for it. I've, I've heard that this is like the best part of the book, so, and I've been loving it all the way through, so I am so excited to see what these last 100 pages contain. I've kept forgetting to mention that, like, I am so intrigued by what happened to Dalinar's memory of his wife, and, like, what it means when he goes to the old magic, like, uh, I'm really intrigued by his memory loss and, like, what's going on with all of that. But, like, Moash and his vengeance and wanting to kill somebody, but we don't know who and I'm really curious at who he wants to kill whether like he was jilted by someone or whether it's like like Caledon where there was a soldier a light eyes that did him dirty so I'm just I'm very curious at who it is because I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be someone that we've been introduced to I'm thinking it's someone that we're going to know and someone important but I, I'm just very curious as to who it is because right now I'm like who is it who is it that you want to kill? And I feel like he's going to try and kill them at the most, the worst moment possible, probably. It's going to be so inopportune. It's going to be like, no, Moash, what are you doing? So I'm really curious as to who it is. And I don't know if we're going to find out in this book or if it's just going to be later on, but I'm, I'm curious, okay? There's lots of curiosity happening. Okay, so like a page before it happened, like a page, I was like, I had the old shit moment where they said unite them and I was like oh unite them means that he needs to unite the Alethi with the Pashendi and that he needs to unite all of them not just the high princes and then like a page later it said Dalinar realised that he had to unite them and I was like oh I haven't clicked <laughs> I did not click in time <laughs> I did not click <laughs> early enough for that little thing but I mean I, I spotted it a page sooner than Dalinar did if that counts for anything. Sadius. What? I want to murder him in his sleep. Like, how dare he leave them there? How dare he abandon them, leave them no bridges, and just the conniving piece of disgusting human being. Oh, knew we shouldn't trust him. He, why would he do such a thing? Why? I'm not happy, but... <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it was it was great for the plot, but I'm not happy for Dalinar. Kaladin and the bridge four are coming back for Dalinar, and I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. Like they're they're like just them that have like one single bridge crew, and Dalinar's like they're coming back for us. And <sighs> could Sadius have been the one that employed the assassin to kill King in the first place? Because he seems to have done a lot of plotting. Like, he's he's been plotting all of this against Dalinar so that he could have control over Elohakar. So, did he kill the king? Was that him too? He is a dick. So, he, like, he is a horrible person. Dalinar traded his shard blade for the bridgeman. I can't believe he did that for all of them. And that, how much is a life worth? And the life being prices and the, oh, oh my god. I love Dalinar and Cardin. Elokar cut his own saddle. The absolute child. Ugh, what a child. I, I don't like him. He's so 
idiotic. Shalon killed her father? <laughs> like, what? 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 What did she do? Like, okay, great. And the Shades Mart, like, what is this place? How are they, like, doing magic without the Fabrials? Like, what does this mean? What does this mean? It's like, we'd had this whole magic system built up on these Fabrials. But, like, they're doing magic without them, like, has the magic system all suddenly changed? Like, we've suddenly got this whole new, different magic system that we weren't aware of before? Like, what does it mean? Tara Vangian is the one controlling Seth? What? He seemed like a nice old man. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't understand. How? Why? He's killing all these people just to get their, like, death lines or whatever they are. Whatever they're seeing, the death words. I completely missaw him. I did not see him as a murderer. And the Polish men are the void bringers? I did not guess anything. Oh my god. Oh. So the one showing Dalinar the visions is like one of the shards. Because, I mean, he says that cultivation is better at showing visions than he is. And I'm guessing cultivation is another shard. But. And Odium has killed him he's dead oh wow oh and like it's the end of the world type thing so many questions uh i'm just so curious about like what the knights radiant what they were and what and like, the revival of them and like them coming again and like what that all means having a champion the dawn shards like what is going on <laughs> i finished and I feel like I have a lot of questions, <laughs> but I finished. And so, okay, I guess the book, it goes full circle, like we're back to Talonel, and he was in the pro, the prelude, not even the prologue, the prelude. If Talonel is a herald, which means that all of the people, all of those people in the prelude, they were also the heralds, and they preceded the Knights Radiant because they said that they're leaving the people with the Knights Radiant. So were they like holding back the desolation? They're saying that the oath pact is broken. So who, what was this pact with, and who were they trying to hold back? Were they trying to like hold back Odium? Is that like what they were doing? Is 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 that is that what they were doing? That yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That there were these ten heralds of the Almighty that were holding back the desolation. Yeah, that was their role, and that was what their pact was, and they broke it by leaving, uh, leaving just Talonel behind. And and they seem to have these sharp blades which uh, don't disappear, like these super sharp blades, whatever they are. And and they're outside of being from the shards. It's said that they're 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 different from them, so they're another form of magic or whatever. I have finished. I've got to the part where it says the end of book one of the Stormlight Archive. I've read this whole behemoth of a book. Okay, and like theories. Theories for what's going to happen next. I mean, I don't know where this is going to go next. I, I really, I seriously do not know. I mean, I feel like we're going to have to learn more about the Knights Radiant and what it means because there seems to be different powers. And I, I just saw Alan from the Library of Alexandria do a Knights Radiance quiz. So, and there were all these different terms that came up and I was like, I have no idea what any of these terms mean. And we haven't got to any of that in book one. Like, I don't know what an edge dancer is or, or the dust, whatever. Like, any of them, those things we don't really know anything about them yet. So I feel as though there's definitely going to have to be more stuff on the nights coming up. I'm guessing that Shalon and Jasna are going to be heading, to, they're going to head towards the Shattered Plains and things are going to go, go down there. And Seth is also heading there. So everything's going to be heading towards the Shattered Plains. I can't see Dalinar dying because everyone still talks about him. So I, I, don't, I don't think Seth is going to accomplish his goal of uh, killing Dalinar, at least not yet at any rate. But yeah, I can see all the characters definitely meeting, like Seth and Jasnat, def uh, not Seth, uh, Shalon and Jasnat are definitely going to be heading there, which means they're going to meet up with Dalinar, Kaladin, Adolin, like they're all going to meet. Uh, and that's all going to join up somehow. I'd really like to hear more about the Pashendi and the Passmen and how they're void bringers and like what that all means and like like the future of that and like their culture and what they're like that that's just something I'd like to understand a bit more and understand why why people are killing the kings and like what's going on with all of with all of that what the motivation is for Tara Vangian like what his mo like why he's doing this why he's employed Seth why he's he's doing all that 
Uh, I'm also introduced by Hoyd or Wit and like what his role is going to be and learning more about world hoppers and like how he, how he travels between the worlds, like all of that, like how, how that happens. Things in the interludes as well, like how they all play in Spren, what is Spren and like how they, how the Spren give people powers, like how different Spren are related to different powers, how that all works. So many questions, so, so many questions. I just, I absolutely loved my time reading this. I had so much fun. I, I think every book is now going to feel very short compared to it because it was so, so long. But I had I really enjoyed it, like, all the way through. I really, really enjoyed it. I completely agree with what everyone says, that the last 150 pages were action-packed. But, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed myself. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you in my future videos. Bye!